Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today I'd like to take a look at this little guy right here, Loot. This guy has never gotten a review uh, from me, and I don't think it's ever gotten a review from Tom or any of the other contributors of the Dice Tower, but it has made some of our top 10 lists. So, thought I might as well go ahead and do a review for Loot from Game Ride. I believe it's a Reiner Knizia design. Anywhere from two to eight players can play this game, and there is a team aspect that you can get into as well. So let's take a look at it. It's a real simple, easy card game. Let's see what you think. All right, in a game of loot, you're going to be getting a whole deck of cards, and those that deck of cards is going to have a number of different elements in it. First of all, you're going to have captain cards, uh, one captain card for each of the different colors. Then you also have pirate ship cards that go from one to four um, that will be used for attacking merchant ships. And then you're also going to be using these merchant ships, which have a number of gold coins on them, anywhere from two to eight. And those gold coins are going to be worth points, or negative points at the end of the game. Points if they are ships that you have attacked and uh, commandeered. Uh, negative points if they are ships that are still in your hand at the end of the game you've been holding back. And then you're also gonna have the Admiral card here which can be used only in defense, cannot be used for attacking. And uh, so basically to play the game you take all these cards and shuffle them together and then you deal six out to each player. So let's go. Okay, so once you have uh, the deck shuffled and then uh, this is a three player game here, you can do only one thing on your turn. So first of all, what you wanna do is make sure that you have merchant ship in your hand. Uh, if not, you can call a mulligan and then redeal. What you're trying to do here is you can do one of five different things uh, on your turn. First thing you can do is you can draw a card from the deck and add it to your hand. Second thing that you have the opportunity to do is play a merchant ship down uh, into your tableau. Uh, the third thing you can do is you can play a uh, pirate ship on somebody else's merchant ship, trying to, uh, uh, trying to uh, defeat it and take it as your own. The fourth thing that you'd be able to do is play a pirate captain from your hand onto a a pirate ship that you're using to attack another one. Uh, caveat being is that the pirate captain's color would have to match the color that you have already played on that ship and so forth and so on. The fifth thing that you would be able to do is play an admiral, the admiral card from your hand onto one of the ships that you are trying to defend. And so in order to do one of those five, of course you have to have the card in your hand in order to play it. So uh, those are the different things that you can do on your turn. So as a gameplay goes, maybe I will want to uh, play a four down here into my tableau. So the second player takes their cards, looks at their deck and sees that, hmm, well, they're at four, that's a lot. I don't wanna play my merchant ships yet if I can just grab his. Now, he's going to take and play this card here. The reason he wants to do that is because if anybody else attacks the ship, he will not be able to use their color and he has to follow the color that he has. So, he only has one purple and one green, so he doesn't really want to lead an attack with just that. He'll lead with a two here. On this person's turn, they look at their card and oh, they got the purple captain. Um, four, yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's try to sneak past the two. Now, when it comes back to my turn, if blue had not been attacking this, I would have been able to take this and flip it over, and it is now mine for the end of the game, worth four points at the end of the game. But since blue is attacking it, I have to either defend it with the Admiral card or uh, attack it myself, which is in, in essence a, um, a, a, a way of defending it. Now, in order to correctly defended because once it comes back to this player's turn who played the blue card if they are the winner they get to take this card so I want to go up above that so I'm going to play um, a purple three onto that ship so now when it comes to his turn he's going to have to be able to play something on it or it continues around and when it comes back to my turn since I'm the one that played the uh, three then I would be able to take it if I'm still the highest number so now it goes to uh, this player's turn again, and they take their hand of cards, and they have 
uh, three blue. So they go ahead and play that there to continue attacking here. This person comes over and since nobody attacked this two, this one is turned over and that's now points for them at the end of the game. And they can look at their hand and say, hmm, well, let's see, they're fighting over that four. Maybe I can slip this one by two. All right, comes back to this one. He has five and I have three. Hmm, well, my one isn't going to do anything because that would only be four to his five, so I'm not gonna waste it. I'm just gonna go ahead and play another merchant ship down here. Uh, maybe I could be able to squeak that one by. All right, comes back to this player's turn. He has the most compared to this, so this gets flipped over for him. These are discarded, as, long, as well as this one. And now he is able to play another card from his hand, which he doesn't really want to do because these are both pretty heavy hitters, and he only has single cards here, so he's going to draw, and that'll be his turn. This person's turn, again, was able to squeak by with a four. So they put that in there on his turn. He doesn't have anything really that he can play, so he just draws. Then this person just worked out that way, so flip it over. That's points for them at the end of the game. And we're going to go ahead and draw as well. And the game would continue until this deck runs out. And at least one player has no cards left in their hand. Cards that have been won are flipped over and you total the number of coins that are in the uh, cards. That total minus cards that may already have been in your hand. For example, there's one merchant ship left in this person's hand. So that would be minus three, so that's one, two, three points. If this, if this was all they had at the end of the game, uh, that person would have three points. There's also a way to play the game that is called team play. Uh, each member of each team sits next to each other and each player is, is given a hand of six cards. And these players are going to basically total their number of ships that they get. The caveat being is that players can help each other fight for the same ships. Uh, for example, if this player plays a blue pirate ship upon um, a, a merchant ship that's out there, this person could not then play a purple pirate ship on the same ship, but he could play another blue ship on top of uh, this person's blue ship. So they work together, and then at the end of the game, the merchant ships that each player won are totaled together. Uh, and e who, whichever team has the highest number of gold coins, again, minus any merchant ships that are in the hands uh, at the end of the game, wins. Now, uh, at the end of the game, again, it, it is still when the draw pile is, is depleted and one team has no cards left. So if one player had no cards left but the other player still did, game would continue until this person ran out or another person, another team uh, runs out of cards as well. And then points are tallied in the same fashion. And that is loot. Uh, the team gameplay I've found from reading around and talking to people that that's how people like to play the game the most. However, Using it as, you know, the single player, I think is also a, a fun way to do it as well. It is a, a very light, fast guard game. It can be done in about 15 to 20 minutes. And uh, it's a great little filler game that I've always enjoyed uh, ever since it came out. It has a pretty good theme to it, um, which is kind of surprising for a Kinesia game. But at the same time, it fits. Um, you can uh, put your merchant ship out there. Uh, defend it from other people, uh, attacking it with your own pirate. Uh, it's kind of meta that way, but it's interesting enough for a filler game. Now, I wouldn't want to want to play this, you know, five times in a row or anything like that. That would get rather monotonous. However, as a filler role, this is this fits, and it's neat to have in your arsenal of filler games. Um, it's you can pick it up still for about ten bucks average. Um, at uh, you know any of your mass market stores, Walmart, Target, uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. Uh, a lot of different places, a lot of different ways that you can pick up loot. So I would, 
highly recommend this if you haven't already gone out, gone out and purchased it. We're on the same level as something as uh, No Thanks or one of those kinds of cards games where it's just a lot of card play, very fast, quick turns, and uh, it's over in about 20 minutes. Go check it out. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.